Good evening, prospective students, class of 2019. We're delighted to have you here tonight with us. Um, I am here with three students who are members of our School of Engineering and Applied Science. Um, in just one minute, I'm going to have them introduce themselves and speak a little bit to their major choices uh, in their certificate programs. But we're here for you tonight. We want to take your questions, uh, class of 2019, during this preview month um, is our kickoff with this engineering program. So come submit your questions on the Q&A app on the right-hand side, and we'll spend the next 30 or 45 minutes together uh, taking your questions. And it's really meant to be for the students. My name is Mary Buckley, and I'm a, an admission officer here at Princeton. Um, I'll be happy to field some questions for you, but this is your time with our undergraduates. So without further ado, allow me to introduce, we have Paula V. Kopel, uh, as well as Mahaj Shalan and Jamie Simpson. And they are joining us tonight um, to talk to you about all things engineering. Could we go ahead and introduce yourselves? Jamie, why don't we start with you? Hi, I'm Jamie Simpson. I'm a junior in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department, and I'm focusing on my certificates in Architecture, Urban Studies, and Environmental Studies. Thanks, Jamie. Mohammed. Hi, uh, prospective students. My name is Mohammed Shalan. I'm class of 2017. I'm in the Chemical and Biological Engineering Department, and I'm looking to do certificates in Computer Science and Global Health and Policy. Um, and I'm Pallavi. Um, I'm a junior in the Computer Science Department, um, and I'm pursuing certificates in Robotics and Intelligent Systems, Applied and Computational Math, and Statistics and Machine Learning. Very good. All right. Thank you, all three. Um, so we have a lot of questions coming through. I want to just get right to it. Um, so I think this is a great one to start off with because it speaks a little bit to your first two years here at Princeton. I think it's a really unique component to the Princeton education. And so what course sequence would you recommend for students during their freshman and sophomore years? So maybe could one of you or all of you speak a little bit to the foundation or the liberal arts program um, at Princeton University? So uh, coming in as freshmen, the, the sequences or the courses that you necessarily have to take is that you have to take a required uh, freshman seminar, either your freshman fall or your freshman spring. Uh, otherwise, as uh, an, a prospective engineering student, what you're mostly going to be taking is uh, or are the intro math and science classes. So you'll probably take, be taking a mixture of either chemistry, uh, physics, possibly molecular biology, uh, depending on which engineering you're doing, computer science, and uh, some math. Good. Anyone else have anything to add? In addition to those, your freshman year is a really good time to try out some classes, maybe that you haven't thought of trying yet. That's how I got involved in my environmental studies certificate. Um, we have these uh, great advisors, your freshman year you come in and we have what's called BSE Interactors and these are upperclassmen students who help the freshmen, um, help them pick out their classes and go through the advising process because it's a lot to take in when you first start. I was recommended to take the in Intro Environmental uh, Studies course and I kept on with the program since then. Yeah, um, definitely to echo what's been said already, I think that freshman and sophomore year, um, a lot of engineering students do take the engineering prerequisites, um, but there's also definitely opportunities like freshman seminars, um, and like Jamie said, just a chance to really explore your um, academic interests. I know a lot of people took languages, um, so really you can just kind of pursue what seems interesting to you because it's so early in your time here. Great. Thank you, uh, everyone. So let's see what else we have going on over here. Um, how about this one? I'd love to hear more about some students' personal experience with research on campus and or the senior thesis. Uh, I would like to be involved with research, but I'm not entirely sure what to expect. So I think it's also worth noting uh, that Jamie and Pallavi are juniors, and Muhammad is a sophomore. So they're, uh, Jamie and Pallavi are certainly on their way well with research. Um, so maybe one of you two could launch into that, and we'll take it from there. Um, sure. So. I started research at Princeton unofficially somewhat my sophomore year. I kind of um, found a professor who I thought was doing some things that I thought were interesting, and I went and talked to him about whether I could help him on the side. Um, and he was really open to that. I find that professors here in general are very accessible and enjoy having students working with them. Um, so I did that my sophomore year. 
And then junior fall, I decided to do one semester of independent work um, in the area of computer vision. Um, and that was a really great experience. The independent work program, I think, is very well structured. Um, and I had a really good time with it. Um, and I'm actually doing independent work again this semester um, in uh, kind of computational biology type stuff. Um, so I think that in terms of getting involved with research, there's a lot of ways to do it, whether through official channels or unofficial channels. And also, there's a different, there's a wide variety of like areas that you can pursue, even if you're not sure what exactly it is you want to be doing. Thanks, Pallavi. Um, so why don't we take the next question, since we're, tons are coming through. Um, I'm going to take this one. I have an interest in bioengineering. I understand it. The actual degree is for chemical. But is there a way to focus on the biological side? I know about the engineering biology program, but there's also a way to substitute chem recs for bio ones. So I think it's um, obvious this one goes to Mohammed. Mohammed, could you take this? Uh, yeah. So the thing, uh, unfortunately, you cannot substitute the chem recs for bio ones. However, once you go into your junior and senior year, when you start doing uh, independent research and you start focusing on your thesis and everything like that, um, there is definitely a way that you can focus more of your uh, of your, I guess, your career choice or what you want to study to be more biologically based. Um, and that really depends on who, what teachers you're interacting with, who you decide to do research with. Um, but there definitely is a way that you can focus your, um, your chemical and biological engineering, which is usually abbreviated CBE, um, to be focused more towards the biological side of it, and which is actually what I would want to go into. I want to explore more of the medicinal uh, benefits of bioengineering, um, and I would not have picked CBE if this was not possible. Very cool. Thanks, Mohamed. Um, so I think this is a good one to make a differentiation between, and uh, it's going to go to you, Pallavi. Computer science AB versus BSE. What's the difference between the two in practice? We get this question a lot. Yeah. Um, so. From my experience, I don't think there's actually too much difference between the two. Um, I think it really comes down to our um, what are called distribution requirements, which are basically if you're AB, you have to take um, a certain number of courses from various um, disciplines, such as like epistemology and cognition, um, social analysis, stuff like that. Um, and when you're an engineering student, uh, partially I think due to the number of prerequisites you need to take, that number the number of distribution requirements you have to take is waived a little bit. Um, so if you're BSc, you don't have to take as many distribution requirements. If you're AB, you have to take the full set. Um, also, if you're AB, you are required to do um, independent work or like a junior paper both semesters, and then also to do a senior thesis. Whereas if you're BSc, you are kind of you have to take more courses. You have to take 36 courses versus 32, I think. Um, but you're you're only required to do one semester of independent work. But I think in practice, it doesn't really like. It doesn't really seem like it, the difference between the two tracks isn't really that pronounced, I think. And people tend to choose one based on, I know a lot of people do AB because they want to take a language, um, and they feel that that route is more suitable towards that, whereas other people who maybe want to take more technical courses will choose to be BSc. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. So this one's creeping up, and it's uh, gotten the most votes, so let's take it. What are some opportunities that Princeton's engineering program has allowed you to, you to achieve that you could not have done at any other institution? So maybe speak to your unique Princeton experience. Who wants to take it? I'll take this one. Um, I think Princeton has a lot of resources that allow you to branch out and try new things, even within your own discipline. I took a course last semester on Spanish bridge, bridge design and I was able to go to Spain actually over our fall break and meet with one of the premier bridge engineers in Spain. Um, it was great. We got to interview him and meet with his department and go to construction sites on in Spain and, and visit all these great structures that m maybe at another institution you wouldn't have the ability to go to just because of Princeton's connections and resources. You see a lot more opportunities with these amazing professors that we have here. Anyone else have anything to add? Um, yeah, uh, I was, uh, sorry for Jordan, but um, I feel that the, the Princeton Engineering Department uh, with its faculty uh, is very renowned in their uh, their accreditation and um, 
being able to interact with professors that have such deep knowledge in their fields um, has allowed me to make very good connections with professors and even uh, work in some of their labs. Um, actually working in, even though I'm a chemical and biological engineering major, I am working in a mechanical and aerospace engineering lab. So there is a lot of cross-dimension between the Princeton Engineering Department um, and I feel that as a sophomore doing uh, research under uh, professors and their graduate students at such an early age when I'm still in the process of taking introductory classes is something that is unmatched uh, and unheard of because uh, your learning experience should definitely be supplemented by a practical and a research-based experience and I feel that Princeton has given me the opportunity to do so. Yeah. Um, one thing I just wanted to add real quickly is um, I know there's been comments regarding how the university kind of supports your interests and things like that. Um, one really great experience that I had my sophomore year was, um, so Princeton's computer science department was kind enough to fund to fund a group of at least 20 girls to go to the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing, which is, you know, a really large conference for female engineers and particularly women in computer science. Um, and I think just the fact that they're willing to sponsor that many students to go, even sophomores, you know, who, if they're AB especially, may not have even, like, declared um, as computer science is really a testament to how much the university is willing to spend in ensuring that you get the opportunity to experience your major and your discipline very fully and also engage with people not only on campus who are interested in the same things but also off campus. So. Sounds like great engagement with faculty members as well as your peers and um, I'm going at the end to include links on our event page of any information or tidbits that were shared here today so for example more information about that Grace Hopper conference so if you do want to learn more uh, please follow up on the event page and we'll, we'll have some sh links there for you to view. Okay, let's get to the next one. Um, so how about this one? And I think it's a pretty open question for the three of you. Is it difficult to transfer from a natural science to engineering, e.g. chemistry to chemical engineering and vice versa? Let's take it. Oh, Mohammed, your sound's off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I could actually take this question because uh, I was in the same situation. I, when I decided to go to Princeton, I was going to become a chemistry major, but uh, like about a couple weeks before actually going to Princeton, I decided to do chemical engineering. Uh, from what I do know, because I have friends both switching from uh, chemistry to chemical engineering and vice versa, there is a lot of overlap with the classes, but uh, some classes take a different perspective or a different scope with a topic to make it more engineering based. For example, um, a chemistry thermodynamics course might be a little, a little bit different than a chemical engineering thermodynamics course. Uh, so it is, um, there is a lot of overlap in the classes. It is a little bit difficult to switch from a natural science to engineering, but vice versa, it's a lot easier to go from an engineering to natural science because you would have covered a lot of the same courses uh, even more than what you've had to, to switch from an engineering to a natural science. Good, thank you. Uh, so this one, Polavi, this goes to you. Is anyone pursuing the Applied and Computational Mathematics Certificate? Does it complement the engineering curriculum, as well as classes and practical application? Um, yeah, so I found that it definitely complemented um, a computer science curriculum, at least. Um, that's my background. And also, I think, an ORPI curriculum. Um, but I think it can be applied to... Can you let them know what ORPI stands for? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Operations Research and Financial Engineering. Um, and I think it can be applied to the other engineering departments as well. Um, I know some really core classes, such as differential equations, kind of fall into that. Um, so just as kind of an overview, for most certificates, I think you have to take around five extra courses. Um, and you could kind of cross count between your departmental courses and the certificate courses. Um, so in general, I think that the applied and computational math um, certificate is well po like well suited for an engineering student because of how many applied math courses we take um, just kind of as a nature of what we're doing. Um, as far as practical application, I definitely think that, so I, I, I suppose, so I've been going to the um, certificate colloquiums kind of, which is where the seniors who are graduating present the independent work that they've been doing. And a lot of it has to do recently with um, like data analysis type stuff 
So as far as applications of the certificates go, um, that's kind of where the trend is right now. So if that's something you're interested in, um, the certificate is a great way to pursue that. Um, I, and that's kind of the angle I'm pursuing it from. Um, so I don't really know how I can speak to other applications of it, but I'm sure that there's ways to make it work. And the program faculty have all been exceptionally you know, um, kind and helpful and willing to meet and discuss any questions. So I'm sure that you could find a way to make it fit what you want to do. Cool. Great. Thank you. Um, all right, so this is a good one for all of you. How much time on average are you spending in the lab outside of class? Do you work out uh, your weekly schedule with your professor? Who wants to take that one? I could take that one. <laughs> well, I guess we could all take that one. Um, outside of class, I say I spend around maybe five hours in lab. Um, and it would obviously increase more as uh, you go up higher in curriculum and uh, in uh, in year. Uh, with regards to weekly schedule with professor, it's it's more of something that you're going to have to talk to with your professor if you do decide to work in a research lab uh, while handling an academic course load. Um, but it's they they understand that you have other responsibilities but they do expect you to make a commitment to uh, to working in their lab. So it's not really a weekly schedule, it's just something that you're going to have to work out with a professor individually from my own experience. Um, I don't know if uh, if Jamie or Pallavi had similar or different experiences. Um, so yeah, so I guess my experience was in terms of like lab classes, as a computer science major I actually haven't taken any lab classes, so the labs I guess my equivalent is independent work or like research I've been doing with professors. Um, and that's kind of just been like, I think there's an expectation that you'll put in about five to six hours per week at least. Um, and I've kind of just worked that out with my professor and met with them once a week to like check in. Um, and that's the way I've done it at least. Uh, maybe Jamie has a different perspective. Sure. Um, I'm actually not doing any research in the lab. My lab classes, um, if you take a lab, they're generally three hours in the afternoon or the evening. That's the class time. Um, I've never had to stay over for a lab, but I'm sure, I mean, we're doing very different types of lab work. What I do have is since I'm doing the, um, an architecture certificate, I'm actually basically cross-listed with the School of Architecture. So I spend a lot of time in the studio, which is I would equivalent to a, a lab time. So the studio is three hours in the afternoon in place of a lab, and then you would spend time outside of that class time working on your, your work um, in the evenings. What's great is that the School of Architecture provides the students with a, a studio space, large desk drawers. Um, there's so many resources. The, the student-run lab downstairs in the building um, is open until midnight. You can you can work there. So if you have to spend time outside of your class time, everything is provided for you. There's people to teach you how to use everything, and um, it's a type of lab that you might not expect, but it's really fun. Thank you, everyone. Jamie's last point there, I think, really um, highlights the the ability to be able to explore across a variety of disciplines here at Princeton, regardless of your major choice. So it's a, a cool option. Okay, so how about this one? I know in talking with you guys over time, um, you haven't studied abroad yet or maybe are not going to pursue abroad, but maybe could you guys speak to opportunities available for engineering students and BSU students? Yes, it is absolutely possible. I rest, rest assured um, you can study abroad as an engineering student um, and students do, do so each and every year as well as in the summer. So can any of you take that one? I can start with that one because uh, three of the five people who are CIVARC, which is our civil and environmental engineering with a focus on architecture. Three of the five of the students in my class are currently studying abroad this semester. That kind of shows you how many people want to and can do that. Uh, I chose not to because I preferred to stay here, but it was definitely an option. And as I talked about earlier, even if you don't study abroad, there's a lot of opportunities to go abroad. As I, I went over fall break, it was a, about a week. You, it's a little less commitment than a full semester, but there's opportunity everywhere. You, it's definitely possible for engineers. Good, thank you. Perfect. Um, so I think this one's just good to to visit in thinking of broad terms about engineering. How easy is it to complete 
the distribution requires requirements, a major, and a certificate. So can you guys just sort of speak to the broad scope of your curriculum? Um, sure. So I guess um, I personally um, didn't find it to be too difficult to complete the distribution requirements um, and my departmental requirements. Um, and my uh, certificate requirements. Um, I'm actually going to be done, I think, with most of them by next fall, so my senior fall. Um, and I think it's important to note that um, I feel that a lot of it just kind of happened along the way. Like, I <laughs> took courses that I was interested in, and before I knew it, I was kind of just done with things. Um, I definitely wouldn't be worried about that. Um, also, I just kind of want to highlight that um, your certificate programs, um, depending on the certificate you do, there can be a lot of overlap with the major you're pursuing or with the distribution requirements you're taking, right? Because you're naturally going to be taking things you're interested in, and your certificates will probably uh, just kind of be an extension of that. So I definitely wouldn't be worried. Absolutely. I have the situation now where um, I wasn't planning on taking a certificate program at all. And over the last two and a half years, I'm at the end of my junior year now, I've noticed that I fulfill most of the requirements for these certificate programs. Like, well, I said, it's almost by accident, but you realize that you're, you're taking things you're interested in, and the certificates kind of blend together. I'm in urban studies, environmental studies, and architecture, and a civil engineering major. All of those things are related. So they, they cross list among the two majors, and they're pretty easy to um, go into even if you weren't planning on it. So I, I don't think it's difficult. You can absolutely do it. OK, good. Thank you both. Um, so this one has popped up, and we're going to talk a little bit about, um, they're asking you know, the competitive versus collaborative nature on campus and our former grading policy, um, which has since changed this academic year. But could you guys maybe speak to you know, your experience with working with your peers on campus? Yeah, sure. So, uh, th the, there is a rumor that uh, because of the uh, the old grading policy, that people were more competitive and less collaborative. But that's definitely not the case. Uh, in engineering department, a lot of you see a lot of engineering students uh, sticking together in courses and working together on uh, homework problem sets, uh, projects. So there is definitely a lot of collaboration. You cannot go through engineering alone. Uh, your friends and your classmates will be with you the entire way. Uh, and there's just always people around to help you, whether it's other students, uh, uh, lab teaching assistants, or professors, faculty members. Um, there, there's no such thing as being like alone, stranded, doing engineering, or any major at all at Princeton, to be honest. Great. Thanks, Mohammed. Um, so I think this is a great one. What are the most common certificates for CBE, um, chemical and biological major, engineering majors, and how often do people do a certificate? So um, maybe more speaking to the, the what, what certificate programs align with CBE. OK, so I know CBE because it's such a very general major that there is a lot of certificates for people that want to focus maybe on the bioengineering side, maybe someone who's a little bit more biophysics based uh, or minded. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't re like re remember what certificates are common for CB majors. I know a lot of them do, uh, you, you find a decent amount of pre-meds actually uh, in the CB department. So you see a lot of them doing the GHP certificate, which is the global health and policy, which is what I'm doing. Um, but you also see biophysics uh, and uh, statist uh, biostatistics as uh, common certificates in the CB department. Thanks. Perfect. So how about this one? And we'll send this one to Pulavi. Um, if I were, was admitted as undecided, uh, what steps would I have to take to become a computer science ma BSc major? Which, um, just speaking from the admission end, students have absolutely time to explore. So you don't come in declared into any major. Um, and in fact, 70% of our students who put down an intended course of study on their application end up changing it by the time they declare. So typically speaking, BSc or engineering students uh, declare at the end of their freshman year. Um, so why don't you guys sort of talk to that, that process and what it means from going to undecided to maybe computer science or any one of your, your uh, concentrations? 
Um, so I think the most important thing in going from undecided to being any BSc major is that you make sure that you've completed the BSc prerequisites, right? Um, so those are like the physics, the math, whatever. And if you have AP credits, I think you could place out of a, like a good number of those. Um, so I think that would be the first step, making sure that if you think you really want to do BSc, that you find a way to get those done. Um, and for computer science in particular, the next step would be to take um, Computer Science 126, which is our general computer science class, and then Computer Science 226 and 217, which are two kind of departmental prerequisites. Um, but you could take those and choose to be an AB major if that's like ultimately what you end up doing, or if you've taken the BSc prerequisites, you can then pursue the Computer Science BSc track. Um, I think it's also important to note that I know people who switched into, into the Computer Science program as late as like early junior year. So um, there's definitely flexibility in Princeton's program. So you can kind of, um, like Mary said, you could definitely explore for a bit and then settle on what you want to do. Great, thank you. And um, this question here, I'm just going to take very quickly because it sort of aligns with what Paul of you is saying. Uh, Princeton accept IB AP credits, and how do they apply towards classes at Princeton? So um, in the sense, in theory, we don't accept the credits. So you're not going to start with a certain amount of credits under your belt. It will maybe place you in a more advanced level course um, or allow you to test out of a certain course. So, for example, a lot of, um, say, you're taking computer science on the, the AB end, you may test out of a foreign language. You often see it um, on the, the BSE end with maybe a chemistry or physics, as Paul of you was saying. Those, um, those preliminary foundation courses allows you to, to advance to a higher level. Um, so this one, too, I think I just want to toss to you, Paul, if you are on topic. Is the computer science more theoretical or applied or both? Um, so I guess that depends really on what you want to make of it. Um, there's three tracks within our computer science program, um, the theory track, the systems track, and the applications track. And in order to satisfy the requirements for your, the computer science major, you have to take two in each of those three tracks. And then you kind of have two that you can take in any, or even um, I think any like 300 or above math course or other engineering course will count as well. Um, so I find that, I mean, I think the track names are pretty appropriate. Um, if you take an application-oriented class, those are things like artificial intelligence, um, uh, information security, things like that. Um, I think maybe, I mean, there, there are applications, but I think Princeton also definitely does make sure that you understand what's going on behind, like, like that's what's driving it, I guess. So there is a bit of theory, I think, in any course you take, but enough that you'll understand fully what you're doing. Whereas in a theory track course, that's basically going to be a math course. You can like a lot of them are cross listed as math, um, but you can kind of decide what it is that you would rather um, weight your schedule to be. Yeah. Um, Good. Thank you. Um, does anyone anything else to add, or I'll, I'll go to this next question that actually. Um, has not come up yet, so it's a good one. Uh, are there opportunities to participate in engineering internships in the industry or corporate environment? So can you guys maybe speak to summer plans or work outside the classroom and thinking about job and career trajectory? I'll take that one because I'm planning on going into industry. Um, I haven't done a research position. I started immediately by going into um, engineering and it it was great. I felt prepared for it. Um, the internships, I know Princeton provides internships. Princeton will link you to internships. We have career fairs throughout the year that will introduce you to companies. A lot of them are from industry. There's also a lot of great startups, um, countless startups that you can participate in or start yourself. Um, so you don't have to do research just because this is a research institution. I'm, I myself am going into industry, and there's been countless opportunities f since my freshman summer. Anyone else? Anything to add? Yeah. Um, there, just speaking from a uh, CBE perspective, there is a majority of uh, CBE graduates that do end up going to industry. Um, so there, there's always a wide ver variety of options that you can go into after you graduate. You're not restricted just to doing research. Um, yeah, and just to add to that, in computer science as well, I think um, the trend is very much to go into industry for internships, and um, a lot of people do, do also go to industry um, 
post-graduation. And so there's like a mix between people who want to go to startups, people who'd rather work at um, Microsoft, Google, um, Facebook. Um, and I think the department itself, um, we have a few groups like ACM um, and or Women in Computer Science, which sponsor like mock interviews and stuff like that. So the community is very helpful if you want to go into industry. And I don't think Pallavi's mentioned that she's actually the president of Women in Computer Science. So <laughs> delighted to have her as well as our other panelists here tonight. Um, so I think this is a good one and sort of thinking about getting your footing here at Princeton. Uh, so if you use AP credits to maybe place out of a course or advance to a next level course, um, would, did you feel prepared for that next level course? And would you recommend maybe taking the course anyway? So can you maybe talk a little bit not only about that in placement, but um, your experience with your advisor and understanding your schedule? Um, so I guess I'll talk to this a little bit. Um, so I placed out of the first two math, so that's 103 and 104, um, and I started in 201, um, which in retrospect, I'm not sure that I personally would have done simply because I took Calc junior year of high school and I didn't take any math at all <laughs> senior year. Um, so coming to Princeton and taking multivariable calculus here was um, a bit tough for me. Um, but fortunately, there's a lot of resources available on campus, like tutors, um, study groups. Um, we have this thing called like McGraw-Hill tutoring, where you can just kind of go for any introductory course, and they'll like give you help. Um, so I think that even though it was a bit like maybe shaky at the beginning, um, it's not that hard to find a place, like find a foothold, and kind of find a group of people to work with, or people who will help you out. Um, and in terms of would you recommend taking the course anyway? Um, I did find that my academic advisor was helpful to talk to you about this, um, but I think it's ultimately like a personal decision based on how you feel trying it out for a little bit. Going off of that, um, I placed out of certain courses and started probably below the normal in other courses that maybe engineers would have taken. I started not in the basic math, but in a lower level math than Bavali did, for short, of course. and. Um, um, I talked to my advisor about it before starting. She was very helpful with what I should take. Um, if it was easy, then maybe we could move up or or things like that. And McGraw is a great resource. That's what um, Pavali was talking about. It's it's um, where students kind of teach you. You can go in the evenings, go um, help with homework, things like that. I also want to point out that professors have what they call office hours. and you can go and talk to these great minds that are teaching you. Um, they have open office hours. You can go in. You can talk about the homework. You can talk about what you want to do over the summer. You can talk about your personal project. These professors are so open and so helpful um, in kind of getting you where you need to be and beyond where you think you could have been. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is a, a good one, too, in talking a little bit about work-life balance. So have you found on campus that work studies have hindered your coursework or maybe issues of juggling homework and lab or maybe speak to some of your other uh, extracurriculars on campus and how you, you find the time and, and manage it all. Uh, I think I will start off with this question. The thing is, is that as long as you have an organized schedule, you can basically take on anything that you want to. Uh, you'll find yourself coming in a little daunted by all these um, wonderful things that you want to get involved in. Once you start getting your foot uh, established in, uh, on campus and in Princeton University, you'll realize that you're more passionate about some things than other things, and you'll be able to juggle your, uh, your responsibilities a little bit better. Uh, as an engineering student, a lot of people would assume that all we do is just study and work on homework, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, I'm currently on the rugby team, so there's always time to join a sport. It, I will admit that it is a bit difficult at times, but I find myself, I personally find it gratifying and more rewarding for uh, the broad range of things that I'm involved in. Uh, I also, like I said before, I'm working in a lab and I'm also uh, a tutor. So don't, I, I guess the one thing I would recommend is not to have a mindset that you think you can't uh, do multiple things just because you're an engineering student. Um, it's definitely possible you would just going to have to work it out uh, within your own schedule and within yourself. Just to further that, I'm oh, sorry, just to further that, um, 
I also did a sport, but I did it my freshman year. I'm no longer doing it. That was because of the workload, but it wasn't so much the sport. It was the travel that got me. Me personally, I still know engineers who are in the sport, so that, don't let that deter you. Just know that um, it's something to consider. Um, having my weekends on, on the bus, on planes, all, all spring was kind of hard for me, especially because that is when a lot of your final projects are due coming up to the end of the year. But I also, I work, um, I live very close. I find that I can go home on the weekends if I feel like I want to. It's not a problem. Um, the homework, you you can find time Thanks to do it. it, like Mohammed was saying, if you're organized. Pulavi, do you have anything to add? Or maybe I'll toss it to the next question. Um, yeah, and I think I, this one might be... Oh. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I think Jamie and Mohammed did a great job covering it. And I think that in general on campus, people tend to make time for the things that are important to them. So freshman year, probably you'll spend a lot of your time figuring out what it is that you want to be involved with. And that's totally natural and normal. And most people will be going through the same thing. Yeah. Great. So... We are almost at the 40-minute mark, and I think I'm going to hand you guys your your last question here of the evening. It's um, is it's at the very top, and I've watched it have be voted up um, time and again. So I think it's a great one to end on. That's why I've been saving it. What tips or suggestions about Princeton in general would you give an incoming freshman, or wish maybe you had known as a freshman? So maybe offer some words of wisdom to our hopefully uh, class of 2019, our newest newest members. <clears throat> Okay, I'll go. It's um, don't be intimidated by your classmates because <laughs> everyone who was accepted is amazing, and it's going to seem like that <laughs> you're competing with them or that they've done something really cool that you wish you had done. Um, but they're looking at you thinking the same thing. I It took me a really long time to figure that out. Um, I kind of thought, like, oh, no, I'm I'm doing the worst, or I didn't get 100% on that homework. I know everyone else did. It's not true. Um, make friends with your classmates. Talk to them. They're all going through the same thing. Um, and in, same with that, talk to upperclassmen, because they've been there, they've done that, and uh, they will give you great advice. Great. Thanks, Jamie. Mohammed? So what uh, the tip that I would give would be something right along what Jamie said, is, and it would be just don't be nervous. Uh, try new things. Uh, even if you've never taken a ballet class or a hip-hop dance class or a painting class, uh, just jump right into it uh, and just be creative with what you want to do. Uh, don't, and I, like I said, don't be nervous. And uh, like some of your classes might be daunting. Go and talk to the professor. You don't even have to talk to him about the subject. You can just try to talk to him as a person. They are real people. Um, and just get to know them a little bit better. And just, yeah, don't be nervous. Do, do whatever your heart pleases. And you'll find uh, that it's very gratifying. And at the end of the day, uh, you have a nice, warm feeling inside you. That was a nice, warm message. How about you? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I have very similar things to say, which is just don't be afraid. Be very bold with following, you know, what you want to do. Um, even if you feel like maybe it's not, you're not sure about it, like it doesn't matter. Just go for it. Just try it. Princeton has so many resources available to you, so many people who are willing to talk with you and engage with you. Um, and I think it's just so important to, like, take advantage of that and get to know these really incredible people, your really incredible peers, um, professors, um, even even people like um, like dining staff. Like Everyone on this campus has something to share. Um, and I think a lot of being at Princeton is being able to explore those resources and really find like a niche for yourself. Um, and just don't be afraid to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, um, everyone. Those were great messages to send on to the class of 2019. Um, so that's going to wrap our hangout tonight. There are a few things I want to mention before we sign off. Uh, first and foremost, um, we have three more hangouts coming up this week. So maybe if you're undecided or exploring different disciplines, tomorrow night we have humanities and social sciences. Uh, the following night is Woodrow Wilson School History, uh, Economics, and Politics. And the final night, um, Life Sciences and Mathematics. So all at 9 p.m., 
certainly tune in. Um, it'll be great to have you on board. Uh, if you have any additional questions, uaoffice at princeton.edu, that is the admission office uh, email address. We will direct your questions to any students should we need to, um, but we certainly will be able to take a majority of your questions. As I mentioned before, we will include specific links to programs um, you know, on our campus or elsewhere. Um, I'll submit links from websites for you, and you'll be able to take a look and learn more about specific things that were mentioned tonight by our great panelists. Um, also, be sure to connect with us on social media. We have the Class of 2019 Facebook group. Uh, we also have our admitted student website, and we just launched recently the Princeton Admission Twitter account, and the handle is Apply Princeton. So follow along, use the hashtag Princeton Preview. We'll be sending out a lot of updates, um, and of course we want to connect with you and have you share your experience over the month as you consider Princeton. Um, and then finally, if you do want a little bit additional perspective about everyday life, visit our blog on our admission website, Speaking of Princeton. We have uh, 13 bloggers writing about everything from academics to extracurriculars to what's top of mind for them as they walk through campus. It's really a really fun uh, blog, so I encourage you to have a read. Otherwise, I think that wraps our engineering program. Um, I want to give a big thank you to Mohammed, Jamie, and Pulavi. Can I get one final wave goodbye from all of you? Bye, guys. Good night, everyone. Take care.